In today's video, I want to talk about these strange step-like structures we see all over Peru, Bolivia, Sri Lanka, Japan, the Yonaguni site, Portugal, and so on. So first, we'll start off with the Intihuatana stone, which is located in Machu Picchu, Peru. And uh, this is the area where it is located exactly. If whoever is interested to go take a look. When you do research on this stone, what it tells you is that this stone is a ritual stone associated with the astronomical clock or calendar of the Inca. And when I went to Machu Picchu back in 2013, and the guide was, was explaining this to me, uh, it looked like some kind of makeshift a sundial. The site itself has been built in a way that is aligned with the uh, solstice, the equinox, any cycles that are that are really important. And of course, uh, what we call the precession of the equinox. Astronomical alignment was really important to any ancient civilization because they knew that they, they were building a monument or a temple. They were aligning it as much as possible with the position of the planets and stars because if they could do that, they could really tap into the frequency of that consciousness. So we're going to go to um, Cusco, Peru, and uh, took this picture of this really, really interesting stone, which it's almost like it was cut yesterday. It has perfect edges. It actually looks like concrete. And you can see with the light of the sun, it's showing how accurate these angles are. Almost like as if the stone was really soft when they worked with it. It's, it's incredible to try and fathom how they managed to do this with chisels and hammers. And here's a different perspective of the same stone. I'd love to see somebody reproduce this kind of workmanship uh, with the tools that they had. Looking at this stone, it's also part of the bedrock and it seems like somebody has pressed something into the rock itself and made these impressions and when you look at the surface of the stone it has these little holes as if the rock was irregular and when they pressed into it made a really flat surface but at the same time there were still the imperfections here we're going back to Machu Picchu and this is the temple of the three windows when I was walking around with the guide he explained to me that these two stones were part of the bedrock so they're still attached to the mountain itself so the reason why the ancients did this was because it helped to stabilize the structures themselves. They needed the structures to be attached to the mountain itself for many purposes. At the same time, it's important that uh, because these monuments are energetic monuments and they were aligned astronomically, the place, the area itself, where certain uh, ley lines cross each other create this uh, vortex energy. The more they could make these structures whole, the better it would be able to tune in to the type of uh, consciousness that uh, these ancients civilizations we're looking to tap into. I mean, it's, it's really amazing when you look at the size of these uh, stones sticking out and they were able to cut them or chisel them or carve them in such a manner um, that left these uh, step-like impressions, which once again would help to maintain stability through earthquakes and any kind of cataclysms that uh, Earth goes through uh, on its uh, 25, 26,000 year precession of the equinox cycle. I mean, this bedrock is absolutely beautiful. So then when we look at uh, the Temple of the Sun, Machu Picchu as well, you can see uh, that the uh, there's the bedrock and then there's the building stone which is perfectly perfectly connected to the bedrock itself i call this the perfect marriage between building stone and bedrock it's, it's just absolutely amazing that they could mold stone in such a way another place uh, called pizak which is also in peru here we see that this nice piece of stone here is actually part of the bedrock and it's also been carved in a step-like manner if there was an earthquake any cataclysm these stones would not budge very much, will just slide back into place. It's just ingenious. And we see that building stones are so perfectly connected. You cannot fit a piece of paper, credit card, or anything in between these lines. It's just incredible. And they did it with ease. This is one of the corners of the, the Great Pyramid of Khufu. And as you can see, the corners itself is also connected to the bedrock. It's mind boggling how they were able to do this. And they were really adamant about doing it. It was 100% intentional. They knew they wanted these to last a lifetime and it's just incredible. We're going back to Machu Picchu now. These steps had another function before they were known as steps. And we've got a few other examples of these steps. For instance, underneath the Temple of the Sun, we have also a cavity and we see these steps here. And when you look deeply into this cavity, uh, you'll see that there's building stone inside, there's more bedrock that has been shaped and carved in such a manner that you, it leaves you wondering what is this all about. It's huge boulders all over the place, almost like there was huge buildings which have been broken up and the carved rock which I'm standing on is part of a, a much bigger structure which has now been completely destroyed and all is left is the, the bedrock itself. Uh, this one here is just in the middle of nowhere and serves no purpose at all. This is at Cusco, Saxo woman. As you can see, steps all over the place. These structures, I believe, are so old 
They were so old, they've been through many cycles of this precession of the equinox. And all that is left is the bone structure of it. And everything else has been used to build uh, other houses and whatnot with the different civilizations that came upon and lived on these places. And so we move on and here's another stone with uh, upside down stairs. Uh, this one's really interesting because it has some really smooth sides. This stone actually has been flipped over onto its head. For what reason, this is still unknown. It was something that was really massive that uh, could break this piece of stone and turn it onto its head. And something else that I, I find very, 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 very interesting at the right side here, we can see that this wall has a curvature. So I just found that really interesting and I thought, okay, well, if anybody else has thought about this stuff and you want to talk about it, uh, give me a shout. Today, we all have to share ideas and we have to um, come together and let's work together and figure out what this is all about. I would like uh, more people to talk about this because this is our history. This is what our earth has been through and what we've been through as well. You can see behind this, this stone uh, with those upside down stairs, it's got these uh, step-like uh, geometric carvings. You ask yourself, why all this steps? You know, it's it definitely wasn't something that the Incas were using to sit on. They were not thrones or anything like that. This is a place called the Santurio Rupestre de Anoas. I hope I said that right. It's a place that I went to a couple of years ago. And I, I found that also used similar techniques to build their structures. And this is another place in Portugal called Monsanto. And also amazing, amazing uh, engineering here. And everywhere you look in the world, you know, you find this, this kind of thing. Here we have a place called Samai Pata, video taken from one of Brian Foster's uh, trips and he's taken some really beautiful videos of uh, the place itself showing all these uh, step-like impressions uh, into the rock. There's another one called um, the Yonaguni site which is an underwater structure discovered by a fisherman trying to make the world aware of this structure and he's brought in some experts and some of the experts are saying that this is a natural formation. It's really really hard to believe that this could be natural. I'm not a geologist so uh, I don't want to go and say oh well this is what it is or it isn't but I do find interesting about the structure is that it has a lot of similar characteristics to what we find in Bolivia, Peru, Egypt, Portugal, Sri Lanka, India, and on and on. Uh, there's so many similarities as to the way they were building these structures. It just leaves you baffled. It seems like they knew that in order to build a structure that lasts a very long time, they would have to build them using the bedrock connected to the mountain itself. So that reinforced the rest of the structure, the rest of the building. We're going back to uh, Machu Picchu now. Once again bedrock as you can see that has these uh, beautiful geometric uh, angles very similar to something we saw in uh, Cusco Sexay Woman beautiful angles what I believe is that uh, a lot of these impressions that you see is where stones used to sit somewhere along the line something happened uh, through some cataclysm or an Inca came along they recycled a lot of uh, the building material and uh, used it to build their own structures and then you've got this one now Going back to the Inti Watana stone, it's supposed to be a sundial. My own conclusion is that all these impressions that you see here used to be where building stone used to sit. This is kind of a keystone helping to maintain the integrity of whatever structure, if it was a wall, it was part of the monument, or whatever it was, they could not break it off, they could not get rid of it, and so it stands there now. And it's been mistaken for some kind of sundial, some kind of astronomical clock. I really hope that at some point they change uh, what they've written down in Wikipedia, in our history books about these, these, these stones. These monuments for me are an attestation to the level of consciousness that human beings have attained in the past and will attain once again in, in the future. Thanks very much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.